thank you very much for the introduction and particularly you pronounce my name very well. Thank you very much. And I just want to 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 follow the last discussion about uh, collecting data and do some indirect optimization of the traffic flow with it. So I want to emphasize that not just the infrastructure can collect all this data, but even uh, modern cars do. And in the next uh, couple of years, uh, this data will be exchanged between the vehicles by vehicle to everything communication, basically. And uh, this is quite different an ad hoc network. You can uh, share every kind of data you want. So, for example, friction coefficient on the road, how slippery the road is, uh, are there any free parking uh, lots in the neighborhood, and etc. And uh, from this, you can also build a predictive machine learning model to, to, to predict the current state or the future state of the network and do some uh, improvements on the traffic flow incorporating these, these results. Uh, it's a very good way to, to compress all the knowledge about the network because machine learning weights are uh, really uh, small in size. Therefore, it's a very good compression of all the sensor data. And it even works when the uh, traffic is uh, sparse. So you don't really have to, to uh, move thousands of cars in a small area to collect all this data because machine learning models contains all this knowledge and okay, let's build some uh, predictive machine learning models. But of course, there are a lot of challenges in it. For example, uh, there is a limited communication or bandwi uh, bandwidth. Uh, we have limited computational power, limited amount of measurement data at a single vehicle, at least. Uh, we, of course, require the model to have a good performance and uh, we want it to be as cheap as possible, of course. And uh, another and very new uh, uh, idea is to, to have all this data uh, uh, from, from being leaked. So the data privacy is very big issue in, in this field if the vehicles themselves collect the data. Uh, to, to illustrate how big this problem is, I created some maps and uh, I just created some tables which uh, basically contains information about my location and uh, time and some measurement value. And uh, if you know this kind of data or somehow you can infer this data from my, from my machine learning models, uh, it's uh, very easy to, to draw some maps about, uh, from it. And you will know in which way I uh, come, uh, come here to DLR. And uh, if I am a person, it's not really a big deal to know such data. But if you are a company and you have a competitor, your competitor can also infer such kind of data and they can know uh, all of your supply chain, which is not so, so uh, good. So let's uh, reason about uh, it and I guess there is a trade-off between operating costs and uh, privacy concerns. Uh, operating costs is uh, very high if uh, the learning is uh, made in centralized uh, basis, as we have uh, considered it a couple of minutes ago. There are a lot of sensors, a lot of data, we have to process it, we have to transfer it over the network, so it must be very, very uh, expensive to do so, while an individual car, which already has the data, has some limited uh, amount of computation. They can be really cheap in a common sense. So, uh, but, but somehow we feel that uh, privacy concerns are very high in this uh, individual learning approach. And therefore we applied also a federated learning approach to, to see and test what we can do. And to test all these uh, ideas, we, we used, of course, Zumo. And uh, we wanted to test the model performance and the threat to the privacy, uh, whether one can track us in time or uh, space. So we created test data to this analysis uh, by running uh, Zumo and uh, Monaco Zumo traffic uh, simulation. To be short, it's just most. Uh, 
and we uh, we recorded the the parking lot occupancy rates during this uh, scenario so to to make it run a little bit faster we we modified the time step of the basic uh, most scenario which can you um, also uh, pull from github and uh, applied some departure offset to to have something uh, uh, randomized and uh, yes basically uh, we we didn't modify the time range of the original most scenario and uh, uh, repeated this uh, mm, simulation for 60 times uh, if we consider that uh, it represents a working day, it, uh, it is consistent that we, we have three months of working day data. So it's uh, quite a huge uh, data. Uh, every day of simulation uh, requires four gigabytes to store. So you can easily calculate that it is about a quarter terabyte of data that we recorded from this uh, scenario. Uh, even with uh, these low frequencies that uh, parking lots were uh, recorded the occupancy for one time uh, in a simulated minute and uh, in every 10 time steps we also recorded the vehicle positions and we basically work with this data. Uh, we consider that uh, modern vehicles can, can record parking lot occupancy if they are let's say 50 meter range of a parking lot there are a uh, lot of parking lots in this uh, simulation so uh, we can we can uh, have very 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 uh, much of data from it so let's see what are the technical challenges in it so uh, i created a simulation that uh, runs in parallel so multiple instances of traces scripts multiple amounts uh, multiple uh, instances of Zumo and uh, I suddenly realized that there is some some unknown and reproducible bug in this uh, uh, code so I just dockerized it and this somehow solved my problem I, I don't really know how to reproduce this error so I don't really know much detail about it uh, and another problem was with the learning so Federated learning incorporates uh, training multiple instances of neural networks in parallel. So we decompose the simulation framework to have a simple Zumo server as Zumo is very, very computationally efficient. So it can run on a simple uh, computer with the GPUs in it and we can uh, uh, distribute the, the learning uh, schemes to, to computers which has GPUs uh, in it. So uh, let me show the results we, we got with these different learning schemes we, we tested. Uh, but uh, to, to uh, let me fix it that uh, for, for all of our uh, scenarios or uh, tests, we, we use the same neural network architecture, uh, the same data. So for the first 55 days were the training data and the last five days was the uh, test data for for the for the learning schemes and we pretty much used the the same architecture we uh, trained it until an early stopping so i don't know how many epochs we trained but but the improvement was so little that we stopped the training and used the uh, preview uh, activation msl loss uh, functions and an RMS prop optimizer because somehow it behaved the, the best on this data. Our input features was parking lot ID in the most and, and the recording time and we wanted to, to predict the parking lot occupancy rate at this time at this specific parking lot. So let's see what is the centralized learning scheme. Uh, as we already seen, the concept is that the infrastructure itself records the data, uh, sends all of the data to the central server. The central server uh, does the machine learning and then the results are, are then broadcasted to the vehicles so they can uh, uh, use the results. And uh, of course it performs very well. So it has virtually no loss and 
if we believe that only aggregate data is collected on the roads, uh, it poses no privacy threat to an individual. So it's a very, very good approach, but also very, very expensive. So let's see what we can do with a little amount of money. Leica collects their data, they train their uh, model individually. It uh, doesn't require any model sharing, but uh, there is a possible possibility, of course, to, to have a data, data leak. Uh, so it might be interesting uh, which of the Monaco parking lots we are now uh, we know uh, at a certain vehicle, let's see, commercial uh, vehicle 3198 ID in most scenario. You can easily find this uh, vehicle because it's uh, it's defined in, in the most. Uh, it has a, mm, it knows, I guess, seven uh, parking lot locations. And if you uh, collect all these parking lots, you can you can also approximate on which routes this vehicle moves. Uh, so if you, you know these data, you can approximate it's uh, moving. Uh, and as you would believe, if this uh, vehicle once moved in the network, it collects very uh, uh, small amount of data from the whole network. And if it visits a parking lot, for example, 1140, uh, it has a fair approximation on the recording time, but it knows nothing about the uh, parking lot, which is not visited by this, uh, by, uh, by this vehicle. So it's not a big surprise that the, this uh, model does not really perform very well. Uh, let's see some more interesting results. If we are uh, talking about uh, tracking in space, we, we want to approximate which are the known uh, parking lots of this vehicle. So we calculated that uh, in the most scenario, uh, uh, average number of uh, visited parking lots is about five. So let's focus on uh, five parking lots and let's select them. And uh, uh, we calculated the loss uh, uh, per parking IDs and selected the the five uh, less uh, five parking lots with the less loss. So yes, and it's uh, as you can see, it's a very good approximation of the known parking lots. Uh, five out of five is correct, and yes, there are three which is not identified by this method. But uh, let's uh, go forward with these uh, five parking lots, and let's try to uh, try to infer the moving time of this uh, vehicle and. Uh, uh, for now, let's uh, calculate the, the loss function not uh, regarded in uh, uh, in space, but in time. And we can also see that we have a very good approximation of this vehicle's moving time by uh, simply checking where the loss function is minimum uh, during the day. And we have a very good approximation of about uh, eight minutes of difference from the real moving time. So uh, individual running uh, streams uh, knows practically nothing about the network, but also poses a very, very big privacy threat. So let's uh, make something uh, more interesting. Uh, it is the federated learning. In this uh, type of learning, we have multiple agents which collect the data. They train their own neural network on their own data and then uh, sends the, the achieved uh, machine learning weights to a central server, which then aggregates the result and sends back the, the updated model to the vehicle. So they can use this uh, aggregated model to predict uh, the future. And uh, of course, it, uh, uh, it behaves, behaves a little bit uh, more accurately than an individual learning shame. However, there are still limitations that there are remote parking lots in Monaco that are seldom visited. And of course, the loss is, is very, very high on these parking lots. But uh, the curvature shame is more or less reproduced. So it's something, I guess. And uh, let's see how uh, this performs in terms of uh, privacy. So. 
here we can make a little trick that we have a federated model and a model at a vehicle and let's compare them and uh, try to, to select those five parking lots which uh, are more accurately uh, predicted in a particular vehicle because I guess these vehicles, was it those parking lots which are more accurately approximated and in the beginning uh, it's a very very good uh, approximation uh, out of the five you can uh, in average you can find uh, or identify 2.5 parking lots uh, correctly so um, in the average it's uh, it's uh, still a privacy thread but with time uh, these uh, these uh, accuracy rate uh, decreases which i guess it's a very very good thing that if we have a lot of uh, participants with a lot of data and a lot of time to train then it will uh, uh, disappear this this uh, privacy threat uh, but uh, in time it's not so conclusive so we did the exactly the same thing but with time and time try to guess uh, when uh, vehicles model is performing uh, better than, than the federated model it's not uh, too conclusive i'm not really sure why it is not so conclusive uh, i guess because we were unable to train uh, to force uh, for a long period of time this uh, uh, federated system because it requires a lot of time so uh, these results required a week or so to train so i guess that might be the reason that it's not so conclusive perhaps it's uh, it's nature a phenomenon that you cannot uh, really guess the moving time in federated learning shape i don't really know so to the conclusion uh, there are different schemes to to apply to to build predictive machine learning models uh, the centralized one is very uh, good in performance and it, it keeps your data private or even uh, it doesn't collect your data uh, individual learning shame is cheap but it uh, it uh, gives you nothing uh, out of its uh, measurement range and there is a federated model which is uh, also very cheap because uh, it only requires a small amount of server and computing power to to aggregate the results and uh, it performs uh, let's say much more better than individual learning but also uh, poses some privacy threats so our future uh, research aim is to incorporate the ad hoc uh, data exchange between vehicles uh, to, to this federated learning scheme and mm -hmm. uh, we, we believe that we can create a well-performing and also a theoretically guaranteed security to this learning uh, system. So uh, that was my presentation and I'm very open to questions. Thank you.